Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Anna Edu Show, the show that always and always aims to inspire you and um, to bring you good conversations that serve all of us well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's a sunny day today. And this week, the beautiful thing that I focused on is one Canadian young girl, Leila Fernandez, the tennis player. I don't know if you know about me, but I'm a sports fan. I love basketball. I love tennis. I lived the Olympics and I continue to watch tennis. And one young Canadian girl is taking us all the way to the US Open, Leila Fernandez. When I watch that young girl, when I watch the focus with which she plays, when I watch the passion with which she plays, when I look at the force and energy that is required to get to the level that she's at, my thought is, imagine if each one of us put that same effort into our hopes and our dreams and our goals. It'll be such a beautiful world. And as we all know in tenets, nobody, well, some people do win all games, but some lose some win, they lose, they win, and then they win the final trophy. What that means is in achieving our goals, we're going to falter, we're going to make mistakes, we're going to fail sometimes. Even sometimes we want to quit. But why quit? Why quit when there's a price that awaits you at the end of the struggle? So what I'm saying is, don't let the struggle stop you. Keep picking up, keep going until you reach your destination. I'm ready for today. I think it's at three o'clock to see Layla try and bring the U.S. Open home. So join me and all of us to cheer our Canadian girl on. Today's conversation is also going to be a conversation that helps young people going back to school, particularly I'm thinking first year students or any student for that matter, as well as parents of students. This includes foreign parents. So anybody that's watching, when we're done, please share the videos to wherever you have families who are sending their kids to school abroad so that they can get some information, good quality information from our guest today, our own staple at the Anna Edu Show, Prof. Magnus Infarfo McCarthy. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our guest today. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. And you? I'm very well. Are you are you following the tennis or you're not a sports fan? Um, yes, I'm following it. And it's really exciting to see exactly yeah. the progress that she has made. And the beauty of it is mm -hmm. um, having her father as a coach. Mm. It reminds me of the William sisters. And yes. that is really um, um, a phenomenal story. Yeah. Yeah. It's a phenomenal story. And also mentioning that a father to see that a father is being such a positive influence and force in his child's life, in his daughter's life. So I'm ready. I hope you're ready to, but today we have a very serious conversation a needed conversation that I hope that anybody who watches will share the video so that it goes as far as possible. Because when I think about, as I keep saying, I came here as a young girl and I went through so many difficulties. And I know the sacrifices sometimes parents make, especially foreign parents, to send their children to school here. Parents here do the same. So our goal today is to see how we can help these parents to navigate you know this thing properly 
so that their children can settle in, so their children do well, and parents' sacrifices is are worth it. So I'm sure you're back to school, and how is it so far? When I, when I start on Monday, so we did orientation last week. Okay. Um, so we are now moving into the teaching aspect and that will be next week. So looking forward to it. Okay, that's yeah. great. So um, the first question I want to ask is, of course, if I'm going to school or if I'm sending my child to school, what are some of the resources in place? For example, you know, maybe this is where my dorm is, but after that, how do I navigate where my classes are and all of those things? It may be simple for those in academia, but for those that are now going in or going outside, I think they need help. And that's why this show is important today. Yeah, um, that's a very good question. In fact, what is happening is I think we are privileged, particularly I can speak to um, Canada and more so um, schools in Ontario. Okay. And I believe it may be applicable to other schools in other provinces. Um, we have activities, programs set in place, and we have people that is senior students, okay. um, students who are at advanced age, maybe second, third year students, who are recruited to assist the first year students. So for instance, they have orientation and during orientation, students are shown around and they are directed to the various, where various classes are gonna be, activities that they're gonna be holding on campus, where to go if you need help. Those who are very much into perhaps religion, or let me put it this way, Christianity, um, um, Muslim, what have you, they are directed to the various activities that they have on campus. So it's set up in a way that there is no way one would get lost on campus, at least there is a system in place to guide individuals all around yeah okay i like that you brought up the you know the religion aspect of it because you know it's difficult these are difficult times and these are times where everybody it's a necessity that wherever the person has come from when they go to school they find a familiarity right so so if you're muslim you're saying that somebody will guide you if that is what you want mm -hmm. to find a place to belong mm -hmm. if you're christian somebody will guide you and how do you communicate this so that you get the help that you need because sometimes we don't get the help we need because we're not communicating well with regard to belonging to the groups that um they have on campus and other things it's not uh perhaps i mean a matter of you having to speak up well you could speak up very, uh, uh, that's fair enough but on the other hand they have in a lot of campus on a lot of campuses they have handbooks that have been put together okay. and also during orientation all these things and i remember i've been to some of these orientations where they even set up boots okay where they'll say scripture i mean i would say how oh, scripture you know, reminds you of ghana but they would say well university um, Christian organization or whatever you, Muslim okay. groups and whatever you, and you can sign up at these booths mm -hmm. or even with the handouts or the handbooks that are given to students, you can look through it and you can call somebody if you want to connect with anybody along those lines. Mm -hmm. And the same is applicable to even people from different backgrounds. So for instance, in a place like um, Waterloo, University of Waterloo and Wilfred Laurier University, we have the African Students Union. Okay. And even within the African Students Union, we have a group that meet as Guyanians, we've had Nigerians and other things, and then we have the broader group. So all these things are there and you can connect with all these um, 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 groups here. Okay, so that's very, very helpful, right? So now when you get to the school, I'm trying to think as a first year student, and um, you know, from what you're saying, right off the bat in orientation so many things are they are made available to you to help you assimilate properly so then once you've assimilated i know that some people get to school and let's say they decided they went to school to go and do for example business or let's say business administration that is what they went to study but after a few lessons or a few classes here and there you find that um oh no this is not what i want to do which i think is a normal thing 
right? You find that this is not what I want to do. Is there a way, are there opportunities to make the changes that you need to switch? Is, are there opportunities to do that? Yes, I mean, that's a very good question, a lot. <clears throat> and I think this question can even take us, I mean, we can have this conversation for about an hour or even a whole day. Just for um, that. The, yes, just for this, because there are a number of factors mm -hmm. that contribute to a lot of these things. One thing that I've grown to realize is that when you are passionate about something, mm. you know, no matter how challenging it is, because there's, there's that passion, you find ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of students come on campus, particularly amongst international students, with the aim of, let's say, studying certain courses like maybe engineering, um, wanting to study medicine, yes. law, and other things. And these are perhaps the aspiration of maybe our parents or our family members. Because more often than not, the question that comes up is, what does the student want to do? What is the student's passion, right? Yes. So there have been instances where we've had students coming in, maybe some, we don't have engineering and lorry, welfare lorry per se, but at the University of Waterloo, um, University of Guelph, they have engineering. And I've come into contact with tons of students coming in with the aim of, let's say, studying engineering. And along the line, along the line some of them realize that they have passion for media arts. And, right. other things. and it turns out to be some form of like a fight you know, mm -hmm. between family members, because how do you communicate this to family members and let them know, well, you wanted me to maybe study pharmacy, but I'm here, I realize there isn't a passion, I'm not enjoying the program. Mm -hmm. how, what do I do? Mm -hmm. In terms of changing courses, it's really easy. It's not that difficult. It's a matter of letting the course coordinators or maybe those in charge of the courses know this is what you want to do. And we have a system in place where we have guidance counselors and other things who can really help you really navigate the system and be able to move into courses that you are interested in. It happens all the time. So it's not a difficult thing. But I think the challenge that a lot of people face is how do you, I mean, how to communicate this desire or communicate this to family members who mm -hmm. are like maybe Ghana, Nigeria, and what have you, and letting them know, well, I realize the passion is not there. I want to make a change. And how do I go about it? And for a lot of people, the fear of communicating that creates yes. problems. Yeah, a yes. lot of for them. The fear, I love that. So how does a young person, because you know how it is when, you know, Sometimes I'll be speaking with young Indian students and, you know, your, their parents are saying, be a doctor, be a doctor, be a doctor, to the point where sometimes they cut them off when the students decides to change their mind, right? So now that we know that at the university level, it's not that difficult to change it. I don't know if you can help communicate to students from here as to how to overcome the fear you know what I mean? Because sometimes you know what to say. I mean, there was a time when I was like that and I knew what I wanted to say. I knew what my heart wanted, but I couldn't find the courage or the, 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 the words to let my parents know that this is not what I want. And I find that affected me in some way. So how do we now communicate now that the student is there? The parent has paid all this money. The parent's aspirations, as you said, is what brought the student here. And now the child is saying, this is not what I want. Help the students find a way to communicate this. Well, it's a bit of a challenge, you know, mm -hmm. because I think the communication will really start at the parent's level. You know, educating parents to understand that. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not about you, the parent per se, but it's about the future of the child. Mm -hmm. So how can you work with your child to ensure that when they grow up, you know, to be who they want to be, at least they'll be proud of themselves and know that, well, this is what I wanted to do and I've been able to accomplish it. And I think we need to start that conversation because the earlier we start that, the better. Um, in a lot of cultures, it's, you, know, you didn't mention Indian parents. It's not Indian parents alone. I mean, you go to Ghana, everybody wants the child to. I remember years ago, I was invited by a private institution to give a talk to high, high school students with regard to professions. And I recall asking them this question about what they wanted to do. And most of them wanted to do either medicine, law, 
accounting, engineering, and what have you. And that is the mindset. That is how we've been raised. That's been how we've been socialized to think that, well, if I go this route, these routes, that will make me a successful person. Yeah. But I think what is important is we being able to engage our children mm -hmm. and being able to find out exactly where their interests lie. Mm -hmm. You know, so that may be very good artists yes. I mean, who can really come up with something unique, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, if we are able to uh, identify these things, we are able to help them, you know, um, uh, nurture these um, skills or abilities that they have. And it will surprise you in future, we may have um, wonderful people who will make a difference in our world, you know. So mm -hmm. it's important that we start having that conversation with parents to let them know that it's not, we don't have to live our lives through our children, but mm -hmm. let them be. But I can understand what you said earlier in terms of parents sending their kids here. Mm -hmm. So imagine if a parent may be raising about 10, 50,000 or whatever you to send mm -hmm. here as an international student. Yes. So with the aim that my child is going to study this course. More often than not, it turns out to be very difficult for the parent to really accept the news that maybe Johnny or Ajua or whoever that I sent to this part of the world has decided to change the course that is um, uh, offered them, you know, or has decided to maybe move into another department or something. Mm -hmm. It can be very challenging, but I think we need to continue having these conversations and we'll get to a point where perhaps maybe parents may understand. Mm -hmm. It's the world we live in where success is really measured mm -hmm. based on the kind of profession you are pursuing. Yes. Uh, and that is uh, the challenge that we all face. That is the challenge that we all face because sometimes then we get so hooked on, you know, oh, my child is a doctor. Meanwhile, if their child says, I'm a dancer, that child is looked down on. If that child says, I'm a, whatever it is, it seems like there are certain five professions that are the all in all, right? So, and, and with technology and everything, I think it would be easier for parents to understand that it's a new world. But then again, it depends on the young people and how they go about so let's say now you're on campus you took you started this program that your parents brought you to to you know to study engineering and you find that you're failing you're failing and and not just in academics but with all the burden of not failing your parents trying to figure yourself out in a new environment and all that now you're actually not doing well is it safe to communicate to your parents once again because i'm trying to put myself in the shoes of a student a young 18 year old 19 year old is it safe to con to be to communicate to your parents that it's not just about the classroom this and that and that is how it's affecting me how do we communicate that to our parents because if anybody is going to watch this video, I want them to be able to share it with others who can hear what the child is saying. So how does the child feel safe? And let's help the child communicate it. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yes. Um, I think, number one, it will depend on the level of relationship or the rapport mm -hmm. that a child has with the parents. Okay. If the child is from an environment where parents are quite open and able to discuss issues with a child, um, it's easier. You can have that communication. Um, in a lot of families, some of the children, they get along more better with them, with their, with the mothers mm -hmm. than their fathers, you know, or depending on who you get along with. But if I'm to advise, I think my first advice is perhaps maybe reach out to the counseling department of the university that you find yourself. Okay. And have a conversation with the counselor and this person will help you because um, there are a number of issues that one would have to grapple with. Mm -hmm. A thought of knowing that you are failing, knowing that your parents are back home looking up to you and expecting mm -hmm. you to graduate within a certain period of time. And for all you know, I mean, as Africans, we know our parents will be bragging on us, you know, yes. here and he's doing this and, you know, that kind of thing. So you may have to have a way of communicating and working with a counselor. 
helps you ease that pressure and the anxiety and also the depressive mood that you may be going through as a result mm -hmm. of these challenges. Mm -hmm. And they can advise you on what steps to take and how to um, engage or let your parents know where you are. By deciding not to communicate with your parents, it's not a good idea, I must say. Mm. Um, uh, there have been instances where people have done that, not communicate with parents for the fear of the outcome, perhaps maybe being ostracized or even being mm. parents refusing to pay tuition and other things. Yes. You know? So uh, it's, 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 it's really a serious issue. And I think we need it to is. continue having that conversation. It's really mm -hmm. important, yes. It is. I like that you brought up the students speaking with a counselor. Please tell us, now, you know, we've been talking a lot about mental health and, you know, we continue to discuss mental health in its various forms and all of that. Please help the student understand why it is a necessity. Because fear, you cannot escape fear. Anxiety, you cannot escape it. You're in a new environment with new people in a new culture. Or you've, for the first time, you even if you live in Canada, maybe this is the first time you've left home. Please let the students understand how important it is to to seek the help that they need through the counseling programs and everything because sometimes i would say some of us were not raised to ask for the help that we need and we've raised our children that way told them not to talk about it and sometimes out of the children's own fear they don't want to talk about it but please help the students understand how it is of utmost importance for their success to seek the help that they need in counseling if the services are there. Right. Um, perhaps maybe we can start by letting them know that they are not alone. Mm. You know, I mean, and also this is not the first time such a thing had ha um, has happened. Right. You know, so I think it's important for them to know that there is always a support available and schools ensure that they have counselors who are well trained. These are well educated, some of them social workers, some of them psychologists and other things who are available to engage with them and help them through. Mm -hmm. um, this reminds me, I mean, these issues happen all the time. Yeah. You know, I mean, I remember um, I have a friend who came to Canada with the parents, I mean, with the intention of studying medicine. Parents were really looking forward and ensuring that this individual would do well. Somewhere along the line, this individual was fortunate enough to have a mentor mm -hmm. who advised him that he felt that the skills that he had, the skill set that he had, and um, he would rather do well in the arts rather mm. than the sciences. What? Uh, this person um, accepted the advice and moved into the arts department, eventually went to law school, and is really now an excellent, an excellent top-notch lawyer. Mm -hmm. You know, so the question that comes up is if this individual had not adhere to the advice of the mentor and had decided to continue with um, the sciences, what would have become? Mm -hmm. What would have been the outcome? You know, so these are some of the things that we have where if you're not very careful and do not take the advice or maybe go through some form of mentoring or maybe counseling and other things, you may, it's, it will be very difficult for you to find your niche. You may, you may go with the flow. You may turn out to be an engineer, but eventually you may get frustrated. I've come into mm -hmm. contact with people mm -hmm. who pursue certain professions and they, they, they are struggling, not because they don't really enjoy, I mean, like what they do, but they realize it's not their passion. It's not so their pursuing passion. it is like a chore, you know, mm -hmm. because they're doing it to please family and, you know, uh, what have you. But I think what is important is ensuring that you pursue what you know you are passionate about. Okay, so what you're saying here is that you, the students, need to understand yourself and know yourself. Because once you understand yourself and you know yourself, that will guide you. And then when you add what counselors bring to the table or mentors, as you mentioned, when you add that, then it's easier even to communicate with your parents as you go along. Because now you're speaking from a place of confidence and a place of being in your own shoes. And then you can be able to handle your parents. So in again, once again, to help young people that are going to school 
or even somebody who's in school already and parents sitting back and hoping their children make it, what are some of the common issues that you see happen so that if a young person is listening to this, they can say, oh, I heard about it here. What are some of the basic things that, because I'm sure there are certain basic things that are common with everyone. What are some of those, if you can name a few? Well, if I heard your question correctly, I think what you're asking for is, um, is it the challenges that they go through with regard to, you know, what have you, I yes. mean, making that decision. It's difficult because first and foremost, the thought of you feeling that you are, you failed your parents. The thought of knowing that your parents are paying so much money and you're mm -hmm. not able to live up to the expectation in terms of expectation, in terms of making the grades. Um, the thought of knowing that when you tell your parents, they may, you know, uh, perhaps maybe either stop paying your, paying your tuition or even perhaps even disowning you because somebody will say, well, in this family, we all do this mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you are not, you know, that kind of thing. It's difficult. And the more you think about it, a lot of them get some, get depressed. Yes. Um, there have been instances where some have even got into the point of committing suicide because mm -hmm. of the fear that they feel. Mm -hmm. um, they've been a failure. I mean, they feel the family, they feel the parents and other things. So I think what has to happen is among a lot of these individual, I mean, these students is knowing that um, there is hope knowing that there is help, knowing that you are not alone in this journey. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people are where they are. I mean, I mean, a lot of people did not start, did not have everything smooth sailing. A lot of people who are successful right now struggled at a point in their lives. Mm -hmm. And if they start looking at it from that point and asking themselves, well, what can I do? How can I get a needed support? But all these counselors will help you out. You know, I mean, give you advice on how to go about whether you want to change your course whether you want to reduce your cost load and other things and also i forgot to mention the fact that for some students it's not so much because of maybe they not doing or not being passionate about the course mm -hmm. but because of they being in a new environment yes and the adjustment process tends to be very difficult for them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so imagine for some they've never been to even uh, um, left home They've been yes. home all their lives. And yes. the first time they're moving out of home is moving to a different country and also being on their own. And the adjustment in itself can also affect them. It's drastic. It can even affect your mental well-being. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for us to be open and have that conversation and let them know that no matter what, there is always help. No matter what, there is always support. So they need to learn to reach out. They need to learn to communicate mm -hmm. and there, 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 there are ways that they can be assisted, you know, with regard mm -hmm, to the mm -hmm. issues and challenges that you are facing. Yeah. So we can't stress enough, we can't stress enough that there's help out there on campus for any student, no matter what you're feeling, no matter what you're going through, to ask for the help that you need and get it. Because, you know, in some of our cultures, asking for help is a sign of weakness. So, you know, hey, how am I going to say this? What if this? What if that? So let's say a student has now gotten the courage, has spoken to the parents, and now the parents decide, okay, we're not going to take care of you anymore because you know how drastic some parents can get. Are there resources on campus where the student can actually go to somebody and say, this is my situation. I still want to go to school. Because we know that sometimes students will just drop out between adjusting to school life, between adjusting to a new environment, between, you know, feeling like they don't belong there. Because right now, their main support is not there, right? So before the student gets overwhelmed and quits altogether, I, I want us to address that student and say that, is there a place the student can go and speak to somebody, you know, who can say something to them to keep them going on? Yeah, um, in terms of support for, in the event that maybe, maybe a parent or somebody decides not to pay one's tuition, um, it's a bit of a challenge, but mm -hmm. what I can say is that I think it's important for the student to explore 
all options. What I mean by all options is having a conversation with the school mm -hmm. and letting them know this is what the issues are and what have you. Some schools have some form of scholarship. It could be right. academic scholarship. It could mm -hmm. be perhaps maybe financial and other things. And there are ways to um, assist in one way or the other. I'm not privy to all the uh, resources that are available for students. But um, there is a saying that if you don't explore, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm trying to translate a local uh, problem. Yes. Yes. Says, if you don't explore something, you didn't know what's available, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. it's important for us to make the effort to ask, mm -hmm. you know, make the effort to make that request. Um, usually what I tell people is the worst thing that can happen to you is uh, a no response. But no doesn't really uh, destroy who you are. It doesn't mm -hmm. change your name. So if we keep knocking, eventually doors may open. I've come into contact with students who perhaps maybe they came here with no financial support or anything, and some of them had to work. So what it is, maybe take a semester off, work, pay tuition, go for a semester or for a year, and then mm -hmm. you know break. And if you are dedicated to what you are doing, you definitely find a way out. So there are ways are, are, are around this, you know. So I would encourage that these students reach out and find somebody that they can talk to. It's important. It's you don't, important. you don't, you don't, you don't, um, you don't keep it to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, because the more you struggle and you keep these things to yourself, the more it fresh this into mm -hmm. other forms of issues. You know, concerns. Right. Yeah. Right. So what you're saying is that on campus, there are scholarships, there are re there are other resources, and there's also the option of working and going to school at the same time. Because, you know, um, some people come from places where they say, go to school. Now they've said it, your parents have said it. Okay, we paid this much, go to school. What I'm finding is that a lot of parents don't take so many other little things into consideration. So I want this one to be a conversation that hands the students all the ideas that are available. So what you said is sometimes there are scholarships, there are grants, um, you can work and all of that. And as well, would you say that, like you said before, the students should find a community to belong to so that they can get maybe role models and things like that that can guide them. Would you say that that's also an option? Um, that is not a bad idea, but let's go back to this idea of working. Um, I think we are talking about both international students and then local students, right? right. Uh, with international students, I think the opportunity to work tends to be a bit limited, you know, yeah. because they are not uh, either landed or they are not Canadian citizens. So we mm -hmm. need to also factor those in. Um, in terms of reaching out to community, yes, um, more often than not, what I tend to say is that none of us is an island. Mm -hmm. And also, we as, a, as human beings, we belong. I mean, we've been created in a way that we definitely need to belong to a community. Right. Uh, because I'm inclined to think that if we decide to isolate ourselves and equip to ourselves, it's going to be very difficult for us to cope mm -hmm. with the challenges that we, we face. So it's important that we reach out to certain communities. Um, people go to the extent of, aside from maybe belonging to a religious body on campus, assigning to perhaps maybe certain communities like the African Students Union and other things, they also look for a bigger community. Mm -hmm. Because in a lot of the communities, so in, for instance, I can speak to the Kitchener-Waterloo region. Mm -hmm. We have different communities. We have the South Asian community consisting of uh, individuals from places like India, um, China, and all those areas. And also we have the African community. And mm -hmm. even within the African community, we have the Guinean community. We have the Nigerian community. Mm -hmm. So if you have a way of being able to associate with some of these communities, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Because mm -hmm. within the Guinean community, for instance, I know they have a system in place where I mean, when people have needs, they don't necessarily have to reach out, but at least even as they communicate with one another, when you get to know some needs, you try to meet that. And that right. is done within the Kenyan community. So these are some of the resources that are available as well. Awesome. Awesome. So now the student has come to school. The student has been through orientation. They've been guided to the different um, places that they, they need to go to. Do you find that Friendships, getting to know other people around you helps a student, you know, once they're on campus. Because, you know, sometimes you hear horror stories, 
sometimes you hear good stories and you find because what i'm trying to do is for the student to understand that like you said earlier no one is an island right so do you find that finding friends who have something in common with you on the path you're on not just any friend right because they say that you have to you know if you're going to be successful in life find people who have something in common with you i don't know if you can speak to that but the people they surround themselves with do you find that it is helpful helpful to students um yes and no mm. um i say yes and i think to echo what you said earlier in terms of who you associate with. Mm -hmm. And this idea of association is really important. But even before that, let's go back a bit and look at um, some aspects of human life. Mm -hmm. um, I think I did say earlier with regard to a lot of people, they've been in homes, in their homes, um, all their lives with their parents. So moving to a university campus is like a freedom. Yes. You've been set free. And I think even right now, currently, what makes it worse is the fact that for the past 18 months, a lot of us, we've been locked at home. Mm -hmm. Final mm -hmm. year students, grade 12 students, had to take their degree, literally their grade 12 classes. Virtual. Uh, virtually. And these are some of the challenges that they've been faced with. So moving out of home is like freedom for them. Mm -hmm. um, so, for instance... Wilfred Laurie last weekend, last weekend was, you know, um, students, I think what we invested in Waterloo and Wilfred Laurie as well. Students moved in the weekend, the past weekend. And I think on Monday or Tuesday, there was talk in the community, newspapers and things about rowdy behavior, irrespective of the pandemic. You know, right. students, you know, I mean, uh, meeting and gathering at certain places, making all kinds of noise, disturbing and all those things. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens is with that liberty, it can come at a cost or it can yes. benefit you. Yeah. Some people, because they've been home and this is the first time they're moving out of home, they engage in all kinds of behaviors, drinking and what have you. And if you don't control it, if you don't mm -hmm. really work around that, you may find, find yourself um, hanging out, using the word hanging out, interacting mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. people, like-minded people, and that could affect you one way or the other. Yes. There have been all kinds of stories about that. On the other hand, if the student is level-headed and what have you, they may do it for a period of time and then perhaps maybe turn around and then know the reason why they are in school. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, So I think at the end of the day, it boils down to why we are here in terms of being on campus. Why are we at the university? You know, mm -hmm. recently I was having a conversation with somebody and I said, looking back, I keep asking myself, when I was in high school, I didn't even know why I went to high school. Okay. You know, so it's interesting that I've been able to come this far. But the point is, I think we all get it at a point, a certain period in our lives. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, if you have a reason to know why you are the university, uh, perhaps maybe you may change and you may pull the, the correct line and maybe do well. Yeah. The correct line. Yeah. I like that. You know, you've, you've said that in one of our previous conversations, which is why I wanted us to have this conversation. You had mentioned that foreign students tend to struggle a bit. Not that other students don't struggle when they come, but we had spoken about how our upbringing sort of don't ask questions, don't do this, don't do that. It makes when students come the first time, they struggle a bit. What are some one or two things that you can tell a student who is now coming in, and maybe not even a foreign student, maybe a kid that is born and raised here in Canada, but has raised to not has been raised to not question authority or to speak about what they feel and all that. What can you tell that student without us saying that you know we're influencing them the negative way? This is going back to my thinking, you know, how you, you're raised to not talk about or to question because it's like you're questioning authority. How do we give these young people the, the power or the tools to work with so they can assimilate? Because I've been thinking about that since you said that. And even with myself, I keep telling you, I came here as a young person and it was a struggle. So what are some of the things you can tell us? Now I'm including myself in that group. I think we definitely need to find ways of empowering ourselves 
And how do we do that? I think um, we need to find, hopefully maybe based on our interactions with people, I mean, friends, our interactions with maybe our instructors and other things. Um, so with this question, let me just use a personal story. Mm -hmm. I remember when I moved to, uh, well, I moved from you know, Ghana to the United States for my master's degree. And I recall I had this favorite professor who was really kind and generous to me and other things. And he advised me to call him by his first name. Mm -hmm. And I, I struggled with that because there was no way I could call him by his name um, without saying professor. He was called Polsky, Professor Polsky, without, you know, and he wanted me to call him by his first name. And there was no way I could do that. So this is how I always approached him. When I see him and I want to talk to him, I'll run, walk right in front of him and say, hello, and then engage in that conversation. So I wouldn't call him by his name at all. But I realized that it's something that has been ingrained you know, mm -hmm. I've been brought up with because in Ghana, if you dare address a professor by first name, if you're not very careful, you might face the field of course. It will not be good for you. So, you know, that is, that is the challenge. So how do we encourage, you know, um, foreign students or maybe people coming in and the thought process and what have you? Mm -hmm. um, they need to be very comfortable, you know, and uh, be proactive in terms of their engagement. Um, so if you don't understand something, don't really be shy about it, but really gather the courage and to ask. Even mm -hmm. if you can ask in class, you can ask during t tutorials. If you can ask, you can even make send. I mean, in this day and age, we are fortunate to have emails. You can even send an email to the professor and say, well, this was said in class and I, I thought maybe I understood it, but I'm not getting it. And we'll be willing. I mean, professors are more, a lot, most of the professors are generous and they'll be able to clarify things. So I, I think we need to learn to build that confidence. It is really important if we want to be successful in this part of the world. I am grateful that you mentioned the fact that professors are willing to help, professors are willing to support you and all that. But you know, for some foreign students, professors aren't exactly nice to them. At least that's the mentality that they come with. I know that I'm still shocked when I see how sometimes how comfortable you, you mentioned how you couldn't call this professor by his first name. I'm still having a problem just mentioning your name without attaching some type of, you know, some type of title to it, right? I'm still having that issue. So when students are going through such a thing, what you're saying is they can send an email, right? They, is there another way? And then the other thing, Remember, I don't know about you, but when we're growing up, if you put up your hand in class and you make a mistake, that mistake becomes your name forever, right? So many of us have grown up in that environment. So if there are young people who are still feeling that way, right? Because let's face it, not every professor is professional and nice, you know, but how do you gather the courage and the confidence to be able to stand up to be able to put up your hand and say that I don't understand or or even not I don't understand. Speak your mind about what has been said. How do we do that? Where do we find the courage and the confidence to do that? Yeah, I think we build it over time. Okay. Um, because I agree with you. I mean, in Ghana, professors tend to be more in charge. They are the authority and you can't question them. And I mean, in a lot of the, the, develop, the developing countries, um, Ghana, I can speak to Ghana. Um, in this part of the world, what happens is that um, I think professors, aside from the fact that they are working with students and what have you, they, they, a lot of them tend to um, be particularly concerned about the well-being of their students, ensuring okay. that they do well. Okay. Secondly, um, students have some form of power in the sense that at the end of the semester, they have to evaluate these professors. Okay. And evaluation is important for mm -hmm. our promotion as faculty. You know, even if you're a full professor, um, you definitely need good student evaluation. Okay. Or you need some, there's some form of evaluation. So it also goes a long way. So it's really important. And periodically, when you Google, you see these things, you read my professor, you know, and other things. So a lot, we are all human beings. And I think a lot of people are very particular about um, the, 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 the impact 
how okay. their behavior and other things affect students. So I think in, in that regard, we are not gods per se. Okay. And at least we see ourselves as also ordinary human beings who've been there as well and okay. here to support you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, let's say that when a professor stands in front of you at the university, that professor first and foremost has your well-being at heart. Because that professor has your well-being at heart, don't be afraid to ask the questions that you need to ask. If you're not able to ask the question that you need to ask, you can send an email to that professor and be able to communicate that way. So now that we've taken the students from the first day to how to handle, uh, find your courses and this and that, and now we're talking about the professor. Today, let's say today is the day where I set foot in that lecture hall. And those lecture halls can be very packed, right? It's my first day. This is the first time I'm leaving home. This is, I've traveled or something. And now I'm in this lecture hall. How do I prepare myself to bring myself to pay attention, to understand what is being said? Because I believe the first few classes will set the pace and the standard by which the rest of your education goes. So how do we lay down our fears, pay attention to what is going on and all that? Please give us some advice. Well, um, simply, the, what I would say is um, ask yourself why you are where you are. Mm -hmm. In terms of so far as education is concerned, um, because more often than not, we are tempted to look at other people, mm -hmm. um, how articulate they are mm -hmm. and how vocal they are in class and how they're able to really engage in perhaps their discourse and other things. And mm -hmm. the more we look at such people, the more we tend to perhaps look down on ourselves and feeling having this feeling or that notion that we can live up to that level of that person's um, articulation or what have you. Mm -hmm. I think what is important is seeing ourselves as our own competition. That is the advice I always give to students. Mm -hmm. See yourself as your own competition. And when you see yourself as your own competition, I think it works out well. Mm -hmm. You know, in Ghana, there is a saying that do lane, mo, mm -hmm. that is stay in your lane. Right. And when you have that mindset, it's just like having a 100 meter race or what have you. Mm -hmm. You focus and it's about you. Whether right. at the end of the day, you're going to be first or you're going to be last. It's about it's you. About you. Mm -hmm. And if we generate that mindset, it, it, it helps a great deal. You mm -hmm. know, because even as you are focused on what you're doing, you also try to network in terms of maybe making a few friends that you mm -hmm. can study together with and you can work with and other things. And that helps. Mm -hmm. You know, so at the, at the moment, I mean, when you when you when you develop that mindset, I, I think it helps a great deal. Some of us, um, I'm not too much of I don't do well in a crowded area, okay. a crowded environment. So usually, what I may do is I would look for maybe one or two people that I can connect with, and mm. these are the people that I'll be working with. You know, in terms okay. of meeting periodically, as study partners and other things, and developing, organizing, or trying to find somebody you can study with can also be very helpful. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. And the same ideas and other things, very, very helpful, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like that you, you, you talked about finding somebody you can study with, right? Because I think at this point, now that we're in school and we, you know, we went to our first class and everything, you know, our minds are still all over the place because we're trying to adjust this and that. But finding that one person that you can have something in common with to, to study is a good idea. How do you know you're picking the right person? You know what I mean? Yeah. How do you know that this person, we all know how life is sometimes, you know. <laughs> how do you know that this person that you have picked 
is the support that it needs? How do you know this? Yeah, that, that is a very good question. I think in this part of the world, when you go to a lot of the institutions, mm -hmm. um, what I mean by institutions is universities and other things, we tend to see perhaps a lot of the racialized folk tend to be the minority. Mm -hmm. So automatically we tend to gravitate towards people like us, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's a good thing in a way, but as you interact with people like that, somewhere along the line, you may realize that you get along. I mean, you'll be able to find out whether you get along and this is a person that you want to have as a friend right. or not, you know. So if let's say you find yourself, you find yourself gravitating towards John, John number one, you know, and we have John number two and what have you. And John number one is the party type and John number two is the studios type. Mm -hmm. Where do you find yourself? What is your focus? Are you going to gravitate towards John number one because you also enjoy partying? Mm -hmm. If that is your goal, then definitely that's going to be the outcome. You may not do well in a course. Mm -hmm. But if perhaps maybe you like both, then perhaps maybe you may have these two friends. You know mm -hmm. when to go to John A, John John number one, and you know when to go to John number two. You know, so uh, I think it's 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 a game of trying to see who you get along with, who you can relate better with, you know, and, and at times it may not even be people within your racial group. circles it could, be, yes. right. it could be somebody else you know so with regard to study group um you need to be strategic you know my strategy has always been what does perhaps maybe jane doe bring to the table mm -hmm. and what does john bring to the table and if we all get together we are there to support one another and that works out quite well so that is that should be the approach okay so now Let's say I've tried everything under the sun. Me, Anna, I'm at Wilfred Laurie, and I've tried everything, and I'm just like, I'm just like, this is rough. And I walk into your office in tears, and I'm telling you that I can't do this anymore, and this and that, no matter. And you're just looking at me, and I'm just crying and I'm complaining about the course and I'm complaining about this and I'm complaining like, uh, what will you tell me? Right now, I've put myself in the spot of a young girl. I've gone back to when I came to Canada and now I've walked into your office as a professor and I'm just devastated. Please talk to me, talk to me so that I can have the strength and understand that this too shall pass right so perhaps for me what i'll start is um giving you the assurance you know reassuring you that the fact that you've been able to make it to the school even speaks to the fact that they believed in you that is why they gave you admission okay. so if let's say the admission the number of the grade for coming into the program is let's say 85 or even 90 the fact that you were able to get in meant that you met that bar that threshold that mm -hmm. is why we're able to get into that program. Mm -hmm. Yes, we all pick up in terms of being able to do well at different levels in our academic mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. So what I may do is perhaps maybe grant giving you some form of support, finding out exactly what areas, what courses you're struggling with, and working with you to provide some form of support. So in the Faculty of Social Work, for instance, we have special individuals who are hired to assist in fact, all students who have difficulty even writing. Okay. We have a writing center, and you can meet with a specialist, somebody who is really good at it, and some well-educated, some have PhDs and other things who can help you with the writing, you mm. know, to go through that process and other things. So it's there for you. And aside from that, within even our faculty itself, we have somebody, other people, uh, PhD students who have been hired to assist students who are having difficulty being able to articulate their thoughts and okay. being able to write papers and things that are required of them. So all these support systems are in place. Okay. So for me, when you come, um, these, I mean, it's a matter of finding exactly what areas you're struggling with mm -hmm. and what help you need and ensuring that we put together um, a support system how to help you, maybe going to person A for this, person B for that, and other things. And if you ensure, I mean, if you go through these processes within a period of time, perhaps maybe you'll be able to gain that confidence, mm -hmm. be able to do it, yeah. 
Well, and a lot of us, I think the challenge that we face is it gets to a point where we tend to give up. We lose confidence in yes. who we are and in ourselves, you know. That's exactly and where I was going. There, there are times we also hear challenging news from home, maybe somebody not feeling well mm -hmm. and you not being there to support that person, it can affect you. So I think what we need is the support, the assurance and the encouragement Prof, Prof, as usual, you never fail. Thank you so much for all the work that you're doing for this show and the important message we're trying to put out into the world of the help, us finding the help that we need under every circumstance. I'm grateful for the fact that each time we call on you, you come so that we're able to put this information out there into the world. So for anybody that is watching, please share this video. We intentionally asked questions that we deal with as human beings on a daily basis. And for the prof to give us answers to, to not only help ourselves, but to help anybody out there who is struggling. And so prof, thank you very much for coming once again. We'll see you very soon. And all God's speed for the new beginning and may we all continue to be of service to humanity. We do appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, I pray that everything goes well with you. Stay blessed and have a nice day. Be encouraged, be inspired. Bye-bye. Jack TV. Uh.